Okay, so it's uh, the first sunny weekend of the year and um, normally this would be a weekend when a lot of uh, Volkswagen T5 camper vans get on the road and start heading um, for the coast or the countryside. Um, obviously with the current coronavirus travel restrictions that isn't possible. Um, and so if your van is currently off the road um, or only able to do uh, repeated short trips, it's highly likely that your battery will be becoming depleted. So every time you go on a short trip it takes more charge out of the battery than you put back in it, your alternator, um, and similarly if the van is just left standing, um, alarm systems and other electronic memories will drain your battery to the point where the van will no longer start. So we're just going to have a look at a couple of ways you can avoid that um, happening and if you're unfortunate and your battery has gone flat we'll then have a look at how you can um, remedy that. So first thing we're going to look at is um, a trickle charger. Now, it's quite a simple device. The first thing to be aware of, however, is that battery technology has changed in recent years. So if you have um, an older battery charger uh, knocking about in your shed or your garage from years gone by, you just need to check that it is still compatible with the type of battery you have. So if you've got a more modern vehicle, particularly one with stop-start technology, you may have um, an AGM um, absorbent glass matte battery or an enhanced flooded battery. Um, which requires a different type of charging technology. So just be aware of that because you can do more harm than damage um, if you're using an old school charger. So, we'll have a look at how to fit one of these. The first thing to identify is where the battery is located in the T5 um, and it's hidden under this uh, plastic cover. So the first thing to do is just to, simply using a coin here, just to loosen off two plastic screws, one each side. And then that tray lifts out to expose the battery. What I'm going to do is use that tray actually and I'm going to pop that in the engine bay here. Make a little platform and I'll explain why in a minute we'll come, come back to that. That then exposes the battery. First thing to notice about um, the battery um, is firstly on, on this one I'd actually written the date when it was installed. So you can see this was put in uh, in September 2015. So that battery is nearly five years old. Um, so uh, by virtue of that, the battery is going to have had most of its life anyway. The other thing just to be aware of, your battery may have what's called a magic eye. Um, and if you can see down in there, I don't know if the, the camera will pick up on this, if that's green in there, that's normally a good sign. Um, and as it says on the top of the battery here, if it's green, that's good news. If it's black, your battery requires charging. And if it's showing white, your battery is completely dead and in need of replacement. Some batteries have that feature, others don't. So, first thing we're going to do now is to look um, to connect the trickle charger. Um, what you may notice is that I'm wearing protective gloves. Batteries um, contain sulfuric acid, so you really don't want to be touching that. If it's leaked or split in any way, you really don't want that in contact with your skin. Um, similarly, uh, it has the potential to create hydrogen gas and explode. Um, so again, you need to do all of this very carefully and follow all manufacturer's safety instructions. So, connecting a trickle charger is relatively straightforward. You can see now why I put the tray there. It makes a nice little place just to set the tra tra trickle charger. Crocodile clips, two little pegs, one black, one red. The red has got a positive on, the black has got a negative sign. And so we'll identify the corresponding posts on the battery. So as you can see here, there's a negative mark. And on this one, we have the positive. Okay, so the first thing we do is we connect the positive clip to the post of the battery. Now you'll see in a lot of videos, um, people will then connect the black clip directly to the negative post. There is a risk of creating a spark when doing this and any hydrogen gas that's built up around the battery could then explode. So for absolute safety, um, the manufacturer's recommendations are to find another earthing point. So on the T5, got a convenient earthing point. So we've connected that to a solid metal part, generally away from any other electrical components if you can, um, but somewhere um, that is a bare piece of metal that's connecting to the bodywork or the chassis of the vehicle. So having done that, we've located the charger there, as we've said, we then simply run the mains cable, three pin mains plug, into an extension lead. 
and obviously you need to protect that, put that underneath the van, protect it in some way with a plastic bag to prevent any water and rain getting into it. Um, and then if we look at the charger, we will notice we have a series of lights and then gradually the charger, as it will explain in, its, in the manual of whichever charger you're using, it will then automatically work through the charging phases. So at the moment on my battery it's in a desulfation phase, it will go up to um, quite a high level of charging, lower level of charging until the battery becomes fully charged and this, uh, this light will then turn green. At that point your battery is fully charged. Um, and if you're still unable to drive the vehicle, you can then just leave it connected. This will then go into a maintenance cycle, which will just keep your battery topped up um, and get your vehicle ready to drive whenever you need it and prevent the battery deteriorating um, over time. So having connected all that up, we just check that none of the leads are in any way going to get um, squashed by the, uh, the bonnet when we close it. We then gently lower the bonnet and gently latch it. And then what we can now do is actually um, lock the van as normal. So if we just lock the van um, and that will continue to keep the battery charged up and the alarm system working. So that's one of the great benefits of this system. Um, your alarm system and all other security features remain um, operating. So that's trickle charging, which is perhaps the preferable option. Okay, the other thing to mention, if you have put your van on a trickle charger, it's always a good idea to stick a note on your steering wheel or tie something on the steering wheel, make it obvious um, that you shouldn't jump in and drive the van and forget that it's connected to an electric cable. Um, obviously for yourself, if you're leaving it for a couple of weeks, you may well forget, um, or if another driver gets in. So it is quite important to put some sort of note just on your, on your steering wheel, make it very obvious not to drive the van until you've disconnected it. Disconnecting it is very simple. When you're ready to drive the car, you simply unplug from the mains and then we pop the bonnet check the lights have gone out completely on the charger which they have there and then you can simply unhook both sets of crocodile clips and the van is now ready to drive once you've obviously put the cover back in place Okay, so we're now going to have a look at um, a couple of other things you can do, a couple of simple things you can do to preserve batteries' life. Um, firstly, we're going to have a look at simply removing the negative lead from your battery. Um, and then also we're going to look at, if you are unlucky and need to replace your battery or take it away to charge it, we're going to look at how you remove your battery on a T5 van. First thing to do is, if possible, unlock the van normally and open a door. Really important you open the door so it doesn't relock itself um, and then just leave it for a couple of minutes to let the ECUs settle down. We then have to remove this panel to gain access to the battery. So there's the battery and what you're going to need is a 10 mil spanner. So um, First thing to do just to preserve your battery and, and avoid um, alarms and um, other electronic components draining it is simply to remove the negative lead. So important that we identify which is the negative. So there's the negative sign there and it's a black lead. You need a 10 mil spanner. As I said before, I'm wearing gloves and protective goggles. But then we simply loosen off that lead. A couple of turns. Don't have to take the nut fully off, just enough so you can then remove that terminal um, and then tuck it out the way. It's probably best just to tie it out the way. These things do have a tendency to spring back and then reconnect. So if you tie it out the way, that will prevent the battery depleting any further. Um, and then when you want to drive the van again, after the travel restrictions end, you simply place that back over. You probably heard a little electrical crack there. That's quite normal. A little spark is normal when you do that. Um, and re-tighten the lead. If we wanted to remove the battery totally to replace it, um, same principle as we said, you must unlock the van um, and open a door, let the ECUs settle down, give it a few minutes um, and then you can look to undo it. First thing you do is crucially important you do it in this sequence first, you disconnect the negative lead first 
um, to avoid sparking. If you start working on this positive lead over here and you inadvertently touch your metal spanner between the positive and the metal, work, metal body work of the van, you create a spark that can damage electrical components or create an explosion. So crucially important to remove the negative lead first, which we just, just do that. So that's a 10 mil spanner. Okay, left that out of the way. We can then move across now to the red lead. And do that safely. So we still try and avoid touching any metal components on the car, but you can re re release that. And then gently lift those cables off. So the battery is now fully disconnected. Now on the T5 van, you'll then need a 13 mil socket preferably and if you can see there there's a, a bolt that holds a clip to the bottom lip of the battery so got a 13 mil socket we put on there Do that carefully lift that clip out okay now we come to lifting the battery out batteries are often quite heavy this one has a couple of carrying handles so the first thing to ensure is that you are physically strong enough to do this it's quite awkward you want to keep the battery upright at all times to avoid sulfuric acid spilling out if there's any sign of leakage be very careful don't don't uh, don't do it seek professional help so we just wiggle it forward, so it's quite heavy, um, but you really don't want to drop this. So if you are anyway unsure of your own strength, get somebody to help you um, and lift it very, very carefully, trying to keep it as upright as possible. Now, if you're looking to replace your, um, your battery and you're using it as a camper van, the, the physical space in the T5 van is quite large. So you can put in larger capacity batteries, physical size, which have a longer, um, higher amp hour rating. So we'll put some links to that in the description to explain some uh, alternatives you may consider. Um, but the first thing to notice, you've got a lip at the back of the tray. And so you will be inserting the battery, first of all, into that. So there's a, a lip around the bottom of most batteries that will go under there to hold it. Um, but so what we're going to do is just make sure the leads are out of the way and then carefully lift our battery back in. So moving the leads out of the way, make sure we don't pinch anything, locating it, as we said, under that back lip. <coughs> we then have the uh, grip plate that locates there start it off finger tight to begin with before tightening that up fully with your, your socket and then we can connect the two terminals in a reverse of the way we did it first so um, we put the positive lead on first make sure that's firmly pushed down and tighten that up with a 10 mil spanner, as we said before. So if now, if I, yeah, we're making every effort not to touch the metal bodywork of the van, but if we did, it wouldn't spark. Whereas if we connected the negative lead, it would create a circuit and spark at this point. So we put the positive one on first, then the negative, as you probably heard there, there was a little electrical spark, a crack, that's quite normal, and tighten this up. And then, as we said, it's just crucial to remember to re-tighten this nut with your uh, with your 13 mil socket to make sure it's then fully secure and the battery can't move. And that is how you replace your battery. Okay, so we've had a look at uh, trickle charging, and this would be the preferred option if that is at all possible. That is um, preferable to using jump leads. Um, the T5 is particularly vulnerable to electrical spikes which can be generated when boost starting. So if it's at all possible um, to get an extension lead and a trickle charger to your van, that would be the preferred option. Alternatively, um, physically remove the batteries from the van, take the, va the battery away, charge it up, bring it back, or get a new, uh, new battery. 